it's Nicole. I'm back with another video. This time about Fukushima. I understand that the radical home goddess, or as she's currently known as the radical home sister, Sister Ajali, um, speaks about Fukushima a lot and the nuclear fallout from that disaster. And I was interested in doing a couple of videos specifically in my science talk um, section of my video. Well, not really a section, but there are certain videos that are titled Science Talk, all in one word. And um, Fukushima has piqued my interest based on her videos and other videos that I've heard discussing this, this matter. So there are a couple of articles that I will be reading about, uh, reading from, and I'll give my commentary um, subsequently after that. And I, of course I'll put the links in the description box or the comment section for you to peruse at your leisure. So what you're looking at on the screen is a map that shows the um, what does it stand for? I have to look up what RADCON stands for. There's a radiation um, part of the G U.S. Geological Survey and Nuclear Emergency Tracking Center that uses these uh, standards for this scale from one to four and A being RADCON A, a RADCON alert. And if you notice in the picture, just to the left on the west coast, of the United States where Los Angeles and San Diego would be more, more probably closer to said uh, San Diego you see an A indicating that they are on alert and San Diego is not far from where I live currently so this brought a lot of concern to me and I wanted to bring this as more information not to um, intrude upon her expertise in this area because she speaks about radiation in Fukushima a lot. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just bringing more information because I understand that she has expressed those concerns in her video that a lot of people don't focus on Fukushima and the results and effects of radiation. Um, and so I am living on the West Coast and I would like to give commentary as well and from someone who's actually here and perhaps in the future um, personal um, insight into how it is affecting animals and plants and the environment here on the west coast so let's get into it the article starts off the title is 28 signs that the west coast is being absolutely fried with nuclear radiation from fukushima this was published uh, let's see, February 9th, 2018, by Michael Snyder. I'm bringing two articles because one, uh, this one I'm about to read or um, paraphrase in some points, is from a guy who is seems to be like a truther or some type of, um, I guess you'd call radiation nut job. Um, he's, I don't think he is. I think that he does come with facts and does come with a lot of good information, but he could be seen as a truther. He could be um, misconstrued, I think, at times based on some of his writings. The second one is one that comes from Japan Times, so I'll get into that one later. So it starts off saying, note, seven years after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, we bring to the attention of our readers this piece originally published in October 2013. The map below comes from the Nuclear Emergency Tracking Center. It shows that radiation levels at, radi at radiation monitoring stations all over the country are elevated. As you will notice, this is particularly true along the west coast of the United States. Every single day, 300 tons of radioactive water from Fukushima enters the Pacific Ocean. 
That means that the total amount of radioactive material released from Fukushima is constantly increasing and it is steadily building up in our food chain. Ultimately, all of this nuclear radiation will outlive all of us by a very wide margin. They are saying that it could take up to 40 years to clean up the Fukushima disaster. And meanwhile, countless innocent people will develop cancer and other health problems as a result of exposure to high levels of nuclear radiation. We are talking about a nuclear disaster that is absolutely unprecedented and it is constantly getting worse. The following are 28 signs that the west coast of North America is being absolutely fried with nuclear radiation from Fukushima. And they have it numbered on the article. So number one, polar bears, seals, and walruses along the Alaska coastline are suffering from fur loss and open sores. Number two, there is an epidemic of sea lion deaths along the California coastline. Number three, along the Pacific coast of Canada and the Alaska coastline, the population of sockeye salmon is at a historic low. Many are blaming Fukushima. Four, something is causing fish all along the west coast of Canada to bleed from their gills, bellies, and eyeballs and that something is the radiation poisoning. Five, a vast field of radioactive debris from Fukushima that is approximately the size of California has crossed the Pacific Ocean and is starting to collide with the West Coast. Six, it is, be it is being projected that the radioactivity of coastal waters off the U.S. West Coast could double over the next five to six years. Number seven, Experts have found very high levels of cesium-137 in plankton living in the waters of the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the West Coast. Number eight, one test in California found that 15 out of 15 bluefin tuna were contaminated with radiation from Fukushima. That's 100% contamination. And I need to find, um, they have a link. They have links to every single one of these um, uh, listed items that I'll be calling out and they said 15 out of 15 I'm sure there was a study that was done to determine that there was a hundred percent contamination of these tuna number nine back in 2012 the Vancouver Sun which is in Canada reported that cesium-137 was being found in a very high percentage of the fish that Japan was selling to Canada and they have some bullet points of that um, point that they gave uh, bullet points uh, listed maybe uh, they have six of them 73 percent of the mackerel tested 91 percent of the halibut 92 percent of the sardines 93 percent of tuna and eel 94 percent of cod and anchovies 100 percent of the carp seaweed shark and monkfish and i'm saying these um, bullet points because I like to eat sushi. I actually had a uh, baramundi last night at dinner. I had a really good, um, we went to this kind of an old folks type diner called Coco's out here. And we went to, uh, we had, I had the baramundi with the quinoa salad. It had like pine nuts and um, tomatoes and cucumbers. It was really, really good. It's like a, like a quinoa salad with the uh, barramundi and roasted vegetables. So I try to make sure that I'm eating fish that is less likely to be contaminated from the fresh water. And that's really sad because I like, I love freshwater fish, I love eating seafood, where I get the fish and what times I get the fish and all that. Anyway, moving forward, Canadian authorities are finding extremely high levels of nuclear radiation in certain fish samples. 11. Some experts believe that we could see very high levels of cancer along the West Coast just from people eating contaminated fish. Number 12. BBC News recently reported that radiation levels around Fukushima are 18 times higher than previously believed. Number 13. 
and European Union funded study concluded that Fukushima released up to 210 quadrillion becquerels of cesium-137 into the atmosphere. So becquerel is how they measure radiation exposure. And um, I think, I can't remember the, let me look it up real quick. The um, standard for um, radiation exposure exposure limit I'm looking it up now um, so measurement of activity in disintegrations per second DPS one becquerel is one disintegration per second so um, I'm gonna go to ionizing radiation this is on the OSHA website and the OSHA is part of the United States Department of Labor, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And they say here, let me go find that. Okay, so exposure limits when it comes to radiation. So exposure limits from the Radiation Safety, I think Radiation Safety Administration Resource Center. They say five rims. Uh, and rims is how they measure your um, the accumulation of radiation in your body. I can't find it. I think it's one becquerel. It's very low. So dose dose um, limits from the Environmental Health and Safety EHS here in the U.S. They say that you should not a, fe a pregnant female should not exceed 500 milligrams. And I'm going to another part of it where it talks about the becquerels. Anyway, I'm trying to find that. One becquerel equals one event. So either way, if you are getting one becquerel per, that one becquerel equals one radiation event. That means that's one um, uh, molecule of radiation that you're being exposed to. It doesn't necessarily mean that your body will be accumulating that becquerel of radiation. It just means that you've been exposed to it because you you accumulate the radiation in your bones, you, mostly in your bone tissue. And um, <clears throat> but they were showing that Fukushima released up to 210 quadrillion, not million, not billion, not trillion, quadrillion becquerels into the atmosphere in that short period of time. So let's go on. 14, atmospheric radiation from Fukushima reached the west coast of the United States within a few days back in 2011. 15, at this point, 300 tons of contaminated water is pouring into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima every single day. And I think that's something that is important to note because summer is going to be here soon. Well, spring will be here first and then summer and people will be going to the beach. I'll be one of those people. I have to be mindful of the contamination at the beach and at restaurants near the beach, of course. So, um, yeah, please, if you live near the beach here in California or if you, you know, plan to go to the beach, just be careful, be mindful of that. 16, a senior researcher of marine chemistry at the Japan Meteorolog Meteorological Agency's Meteorological Research Institute says that 30 billion becquerels of radioactive cesium and 30 billion becquerels of radioactive strontium 
are being released into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima every single day. 17, according to TEPCO, a total of somewhere between 20 trillion and 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium, and that's um, radioactive water, have gotten into the Pacific Ocean since the Fukushima disaster first began. Uh, radioactive hydrogen, excuse me. So you have radioactive um, hydrogen, you have H2, hydrogen 2, and then you have, um, or you know, just hydrogen, hydrogen 2, just the radioact radioactive form of it. Um, H3, sorry, H3. So 18, according to a professor at Tokyo University, three gigabecquerels of cesium-137 are flowing into the port at Fukushima Daiichi every single day. 19, it has been estimated that up to 100 times as much nuclear radiation has been released into the ocean from Fukushima than was released during the entire Chernobyl disaster. 20, one recent study concluded that a very large plume of cesium-137 from the Fukushima disaster will start flowing into U.S. coastal waters early next year. Number 21, it is being projected that significant levels of cesium-137 will reach every corner of the Pacific Ocean by the year 2020, and that's probably not accurate. It's probably already reached every piece of the Pacific Ocean. 22, it is being projected that the entire Pacific Ocean will soon have cesium levels five to ten times higher than what we witnessed during the area of heavy atomic bomb testing in the Pacific many decades ago. And we're still being affected by the bomb testing they did um, decades ago uh, during, this is in the Pacific Ocean, Midway, stuff like that, um, when they had this is what, during the 40s, I think, 50s, 50s during the Cold War area, era. Um, number 23, the immense amounts of nuclear radiation getting into the water in the Pacific Ocean has caused environmental activist Joe Martino to issue the following warning. Your days of eating Pacific Ocean fish are over. That's what he, he stated. That was a quote from him. 24, the iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90 that are constantly coming from Fukushima are going to affect the health of those living in the northern hemisphere for a very, very long time. Just consider what Harvey Wasserman had to say about this. And they don't give his quote, but they have a link for what Harvey Wasserman said. And I wonder if Harvey Wasserman is related to Wasserman Schultz, that lady, Clinton. Hmm. That's something I may have to look up later. Uh, 25. According to a recent Planet InfoWars report, the California coastline is being transformed into a dead zone. And I think that the Radical Home Goddess did a video about um, the Pacific Ocean. The ocean is dead. Um, something like that. And that was one of her shares. So um, please, I'll put her channel, I'll put a link to some of her videos, I guess, in the description box as well for you to go check out. 26, a study conducted last year came to the conclusion that radiation from the Fukushima nuclear disaster could negatively affect human life along the west coast of North America from Mexico to Alaska for decades. 27, according to the Wall Street Journal, it is being projected that the cleanup of Fukushima to take up to 40 years to complete. And last but definitely not least, 28, Yale professor Charles, oops, sorry about that. Charles Perot is warning that if the cleanup of Fukushima is not handled with 100% precision, that humanity could be threatened for thousands of years. So and then the bottom of the article, they say, are you starting to understand why so many people are so deeply concerned about what is going on at Fukushima. And so that was the first article. The second article comes from Japan Times and the title of it is radiation levels in Fukushima zones will are still above government targets despite cleanup. And this is from Greenpeace Japan. 
And one thing I want to note is the date of this article. It is dated March 1st, 2018. So this came out three days ago. And what it goes into is the radiation levels that have been detected in the um, forests when they do their survey. And it's a pretty short article, so I'm gonna go through it quickly. So despite the government cleanups, Greenpeace Japan is noticing that radiation levels are still much higher than what the government thought it would be, which is expected. The government is not required to tell the public the truth. And if they're not required to do so, they're not held to that standard, they won't do it. It starts off saying, in the wake of the 2011 nuclear crisis, radiation levels in homes and near in areas nearby in a Fukushima village remained around three times higher than the government target despite cleanup work having been performed, an environmental group has said. In some areas of the village of Itate and the town of Naimie, levels of radioactivity detected at some points among tens of thousands checked in surveys last September and October were much higher than they had been previously um, that year, Greenpeace Japan said in a report released Thursday. Most of the six houses surveyed in Itate, located around 40 kilometers northwest of the crippled Fukushima No. 1 complex, log radiation levels higher than the government's set target of 0.23 microsieverts per hour, ranging from 0.2 to 0.8 microsieverts per hour. Some areas in the village had seen radiation levels rise from 2016, Greenpeace said. There is a possibility the government, or excuse me, there is a possibility the environment has contaminated again as radioactive materials that had accumulated in nearby forests may have moved around, it said. One house located near a municipal office with slightly wooded areas nearby marked lower radiation levels compared with the 2016 survey, but levels at another five houses, which are near forests, that have yet to be cleaned up have remained almost the same. The points surveyed covered areas in Itate and Namie where evacuation orders have been lifted as well as some parts of Namie that remain designed, uh, excuse me, designated as difficult to return zones following the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which was triggered by the massive March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. The survey also showed that the effects of cleanup work conducted in 2011 and 2012 in the Tsushima district of Namie, located 40 kilometers northwest of the Fukushima plant, had been limited, with one house there logging radiation levels of 5.8 microsieverts per hour at the highest, highest reading and 1.3 microsieverts per hour on average. So you can tell these readings are way out of the, the normal levels or the, the low levels that the government issued they should be. The district is among areas designated as special reconstruction zones by the government. The state plans to carry out cleanup work and promote infrastructure development intensively as its expense to make such areas livable again. And that's the end of that article. Um, I hope this article was this video excuse me wasn't too long this is a very important issue that i think deserves some discussion if you'd like to continue the discussion let me know in the comment section or continue the discussion about anything that would be related to fukushima send me a link to it uh, via email you can put a link in the comment section as always i'll talk to you all soon and have a great day